It's been a year long remodel. This is a 1917 home. We gutted it and then we're building this big addition on the side. It's uh, it's taking some time. But we're, we're coming up to the end here. Oh yeah. Well, our kids have been helping a lot on the house and things. We're like, we'll get a basketball hoop. So we got a, we got them a nice one that adjusts so they can dunk and things. Okay, Dylan, give me your pro tips on edging DIY concrete and how much you should try to take on by yourself. So this is 108 square feet, and we probably poured it, what? An hour ago? Yeah, an hour ago. So we're on the last part, and it's getting pretty hard, where it's, it's still manageable. If you're doing it on your own, I would say probably only do like three squares a day, because you'll have you have time to do that. But if you have a big pour, I would just hire somebody. Yeah. Or do it do it on your own in sections. I'm so glad we hired you, because yeah. I probably would have tried to do it all at once and lost like half these squares. And, and the problem with concrete is there's a lot of money that goes in the prep. I don't how much how much time did it take you to? It took us two days to form this all up. Yeah. So. Imagine doing that, paying somebody to do it, and then it looks really bad. Then you have to replace the concrete. And usually when you tear things up with the concrete, you have to redo all of the prep. And so you're out almost twice as much money because you have to pay somebody to haul it off and then pay somebody to redo it. So it's almost just worth it. Hire somebody, you know, to, to finish it. And if you want to save money, be like Zeb and have it all prepped. He framed and he, he prepped everything, so I'm just, you know, I can come and pour and that's that's the best way you're gonna do concrete. I think it says a lot when Zeb and I don't try to DIY the entire thing. But this brings <laughs> me back to our early married years. Zeb's like, I can do concrete. So he had a concrete mixer and he did a pad. So it was like all pocked and not smooth. It was bad. It needed a dermatologist. So we brought our dermatologist. The concrete is smooth. I, if you can hit it early, the earlier you hit it, it can be good or bad, but if you hit it too early, what's gonna happen is you're gonna push really hard and then you're gonna get like waves in your board or in your, cause you're gonna go up and down and, so you kinda wanna hit it at the right time as well. It can't be too soft and it can't be too hard, but when there's this much, you kinda have to start earlier so you can make sure it all. All tips that I don't know. <laughs> concrete, concrete 101 is timing. It's not hard if you time it right, but if you had bad timing, it's gonna be the hardest day of your life. Pull this one out? Just the side. So just take the side up? Yeah. You wanna pass me that hammer? Yeah. Okay. The front step. Okay, I'll, wait, 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 wait. Okay, so this is the mistake. People will pull. Like, cause we're gonna finish the face okay. and we'll just rip it off. So it, it probably already happened, but if you can come on and slide it back and forth. Oh, kind of smooth it out. Yeah. And then pull it. There's a good chance that it'll come off smooth, but we kind of already pulled it, so. You kind of already messed that up. <laughs> it's then. my fault on my side. <laughs> it's, okay. it's not on Dylan, it's on me. But that's just the best way to take off of Do you a, need to knock that one out over there? Okay, we'll just keep going. Oh yeah. Wow. But that's the best way to get it. And then you don't take, you'll see on that board. Yeah, you took a bunch off there. there. Chunk, and that's okay, I don't, we can fix that real quick. But so if we would have been smoother, pull it, it off. You kind of zigzag and then slide it. It tends to not take the chunks out when you okay. gotcha. just pull, so. All right, see that? Sorry, I just made oh, some extra fine. work for you. It's all right, we're gonna fix it. All right, Dylan's fixing uh, the situation with here, a come water come bottle. Over, he Jamie, can, they can see over, it. Over here. <laughs> he's, he's got a water bottle with holes in it, which I feel like is pretty ingenious. Yeah, it's my squirt gun. Your squirt gun? Yeah. You know what? I need to get you a mister. We actually have a mister called the uh, Water Girl. Uh, and I feel like that might improve your life. 
Probably better than this. You can pick it up at jamierayvintage.com. But, this but for you, it's free. <laughs> and this, yeah, it's a continuous mister, kind of like when you go to the, um, get your hair cut, and you know how they have those mister type bottles instead of like a squirt? Yeah. They're pretty great. Sounds great. I need one. I was yeah. thinking about getting a squirt gun. Squirt gun. Because I'm like, that'd be great. This is a little bit more upgraded than a squirt gun, yeah, but. I <laughs> but I like, well, I, it's better to have mist because then, like. It's more even and it yeah, doesn't, exactly. like, hit it hard. Yeah, it's real soft. It's made for paint blending, is what oh. we use it for. But yeah, we have them. I'll grab you one. I'm, I take lunch to the ladies. And then doing this. Mm -hmm. it's, it's been pretty hard. Like, yeah, we waited a long that. time. So if you. If you wait longer, you can work at it a little bit more. But if you take it right off right away, you need to make sure it's like, you like super gentle on it. Well, if you're doing concrete steps for your first time, don't. Don't. And <laughs> Do it with somebody else the first yeah. time. Like, don't and, try it on your own. If, if you are doing it for your first time, I'd recommend waiting. Okay. Waiting a little bit longer so that. It's not quite so yeah. fragile. Yeah, and then what you can do, like seriously, this is making me hungry for like a buttercream frosting, yeah. like. So what you can do is you can scrape some gravy. Some gravy, okay. That's the word for the wet cement. Yeah, and you can do little fills. I like gravy, usually with biscuits. And you can kind of work it in. And we're gonna stamp this, so it doesn't have to be the prettiest, you know, yeah. which is nice. We have discussed that stamping cement is like the distressing on paint furniture. It covers a multitude of cement sins. Dylan said that you get a little dirty and he was like, can you get dirty? And I was like, yeah, yeah. look at the crap already on my pants, Dylan. So there's, yeah, you are. So there are a bunch of colors of release. You can come and look. Um, in the light color. We're going to use this. If you want just an accent of the walnut, so like that's a, great. If I, not, we'll just do this. Yeah, let's mix it up. So so when you throw it, we, what you don't want to do is, now we're going to just do it on your grass and it'll wash out. It's all right. And there's, there's types of releases. I like just the powder. It's super dirty, but I like it better. Okay. And I think it gives more color. Okay. And then you, if you want to get the liquid release, you can actually put the powder in it. But usually it gets like clogged with the spray. So that's why I just use powder. But what you don't want to do is like throw it down like that because it'll come in clumps. Just so when you do throw it, you kind of want to like. Okay, let me just do it. I might... don't, you might want Zeb to do that. He's a lot more like. Uh... So you just kind of come up and you kind of just like missed it. You, you don't want like super big globs. Like a lot of times people just like. Let's see your miss, Jamie. You're globbing. <laughs> Left to right, because that's kind of how wood flows. But so we're trying to recreate the grain with this, yeah. Yeah. Okay. You've obviously got a practiced hand, Dylan. Yeah. You just want to make sure it all gets on. We're in the top. Days. Okay, I'm over to These the edge over here. These are ginormous stamps. He's using the very official method of your his foot. Apply nice, even pressure wearing your high top bands. Thank you. This is hard. We're going to have to. It's a step, so I'm like super nervous about it. You don't want to make it. I don't want to. Front to shave off. Yeah, if we have to, we can do it again too. Looks like, that looks good. Okay, we'll start from. Right, right. Do you want to do this one because these were yeah. the first poured? Okay, so when we do this, let's stagger them. I think that you should just do it, so Zeb, start. and I will film. Okay. And we'll make sure it's in line with that. But okay. don't we want to put that other stuff on there, or do we do it later? The brown um, that I put do on you the want, other? Do you want the brown? Well, I did it on the other ones down there. Is it going to look won't. weird? You won't see it. But we can throw a little bit on it. Do you want no, to grab it's that okay. brown? So maybe if you're new at this, you should probably put up a shade so it doesn't dry as fast. Hey, yeah, well, it's just, it's the hot, it's not the... It's not the do sun. Do you want me to grab that other one and then we can just run it across yeah. the full length? Let's do that. And almost get one out of it. Hop, hop, hop. When you're taking these off, make sure you never drag them. Yeah, because then it'll mess up your impression. I'll help you. You want to grab that? Zeb is a pro at stamping. I don't know if you know this, Dylan but he's the stamping king. We have called him that many times while crafting. 
And you can actually, if you want to step on these because you have a little bit more weight. Okay. You're more than welcome to, though. It's hard to so. You're not a lightweight. There's a reason your son's going to be the heavyweight for Nebraska. There you go. See how, and see how he's just like. I love that so much. Not dragging it. Yeah. Well, it's the same thing. Like most of the people that are like on our channels do stamping and you don't want to get, we call it ghosting. And it's where your stamp drops twice. Yeah. And you don't get a clean impression. So uh, we probably should, Zeb, on the next one. Yeah, you guys are alternating. So here they did one full, a half, and then they're doing a half, a full, and then a half. So it's kind of alternating, so it's not all exactly the same. So we're gonna let this sit for at least a day, but you can let it continue to sit and it will just continue to like color and dye your concrete. Today, my love for cupcakes is paying off. And I would spend a little extra on your sealer because it does make a difference. Jamie is just backfilling over to the forms where we had them. We had a bunch of extra dirt from the front yard where we put the paver forms. So she's just kind of grading it out so that it's not such a steep fall off. And then we're going to get some grass going back here in all the bare spots. Maybe eventually. All right, so Zeb is finally adding the bottom to the chicken coop. I think we did the original DIY like in March, April. It was April. April. <laughs> The chickens have taken over the yard. Yep. They've taken over this side of the yard. They've taken over the neighbor's yard. We're gonna be closing in the bottom and building a run and only letting them out occasionally. We didn't get any video of your Herculean strength hauling that chicken coop over with Redrick. Because nobody wants to see that, but I helped move that. It's very heavy. Think like four pallets worth of wood. Uh, probably. <laughs> Six. Okay, five or six <laughs> oak pallets. That's how heavy that is. It's heavy. <laughs> we looked for a dog run. They were too expensive. So we opted for some chicken wire and uh, the, what are those called, Zeb? These are just T-bars. T-bars, $4.95 a piece. So for under, what, $40? Yeah. We're making their chicken run. And it's great because it's movable because eventually we'll have a pool on this side of the yard. And we'll move the chicken run down to that side of the yard. But for right now, they're gonna live over here because there's lots of shade. And we're it's still, hot. it's hot, that's right. Real hot. Redrick's on holding the chicken wire duty. And Zeb is on chicken wire okay. duty. All right, Zeb, what's the next step here? No, next step. Oh, a chicken ladder. Yeah, it doesn't have to be fancy. They're actually uh, very agile. Yeah, they, up, they, they jump up and down all the time. But, you know, good use for little shiplap pieces, they right? They probably won't even use this much. They just fly straight up, but it's there if they're feeling lazy. All right, well, Zeb's doing that. I'm giving you an update. My lavender is doing good. The tub is doing pretty good. Basil and cilantro. The cilantro I need to cut back. We haven't been eating it because we don't live here yet. The lettuce needs to be cut back. We've got peppers growing on the plants. All right, maybe film this. And there's peppers there. And we've got lots of tomatoes coming in. I need to get some cages. Right, Something no ate the cucumber here, plant. This but this one, one is below. looking anemic, so we're gonna feed it. Look, there goes the, the ladder situation. Oh, are you gonna just staple it underneath? Mm -hmm. So that'll come all the way down into the chicken run. So we have the farmhouse 1917 corbels and I needed it to be a little wider. So I just took two two by sixes, cut them down, gave them a little haircut on the edge here. And then they're 45 in with screws holding them together. So we took what was a basic 1917 corbel and made it into a massive corbel that's going to fit very well underneath our stove hood. So I'm just painting this with beadboard. I already used dark and decrepit. We started this on our live video this morning and I'm going to distress these so that way these look similar to the corbels on the fireplace. 
All right, so we've decided that we're gonna shiplap just up the front of the little chimney that's going up there, and we're gonna leave the sides alone because once you paint them, you won't even notice. Yeah, it's basically gonna be buried back there. I call it a dark hole, but it's white, so it probably won't be that dark. It's gonna be a white hole. <laughs> Sorry, I'm shaking the camera laughing. So I'm adding a little arch to the front of the hood and I'm just finding center. This is 36 inches. So 18 center. And then I'll see if I can draw my arch here. It is a subtle little arch, but it is going to add a tremendous amount of detail to the front of this. Jamie and Odilia have worked diligently to level the mound of dirt that we brought from the front yard back here. So it's been raked by Odilia. Jamie is uh, making sure that the baby concrete stays clean. Jamie did a lot of the grading. Odilia came in and smoothed it out and then seeded it. Redrick's been hauling these bags from the front. And hopefully soon we will have grass. Grandpa's been over here supervising Odilia, making sure everything happens how it's supposed to be. Quality control, we like to call it. So we are matching the trim of all the windows and the doors and the fireplace with the trim on the hood. Except for somehow with this fun shiplap, this line is not the same as that line, even though these are the same. Uh, we'll is just that, silicone in that crack. Is that gonna be, oh yeah, that's a good idea. That way it won't be super yeah, obvious. Yeah, we'll just silicone it so straight. it's not obvious. <laughs> That's funny. Hurricane tides are going on. That'll keep the roof from blowing off. Hopefully. <laughs> Zeb forgot before we put up the tile to center the light fixture. So his solution was to take <laughs> a board and put it behind my existing light fixture, which was okay. It's kind of small. It's but small. the light fixture is a little underwhelming and it's not putting off enough light. And we actually need lots of light over here. The side of the kitchen's kind of dim. So I found a light fixture today that I'm hoping works. I'm not making any promises. If it doesn't, if I don't like the way it looks, I'll just take it back to Lowe's and try a different one. So. This, this is an outdoor fixture though, so we can put this somewhere else. So I haven't decided if I'm gonna paint that white. For now, we're gonna leave it black because the faucet will be black and we're adding these really cool um, porcelain sconce shades. The ones that came with it were the, just the generic frosted shades and they made it look too much like a bathroom fixture, which is what I'm trying to avoid. Just about done. Got a little bit of hole to fill in over here. And that side of the house to do over there. These are all in. Sure, I'm sure you guys have heard me 
say this several times, but if I can avoid it, I never measure trim. I always try to just mark out where I need to cut. I find it's much more accurate. Day 457 of the hood build. You know, people don't realize how long finish work takes. What do you, what do you have to say about finish work, Zeb? Finish work, you know, some people love it because it's the, the project's getting wrapped up and you get to see how pretty it is when it's finished. But it's a lot of work to do finish work. Like it's almost as time consuming as the actual building part. Well, we didn't have plans, so we kind of just slapped this thing together it looks a little disjointed. It just kept growing. I think once we paint it, it will all come together and look really good. Well, I feel like we could trim out some more things, but I'm about done trimming stuff. Well, so. you know, you can always paint it and I can trim more if we feel like it needs some. Uh, I don't think you'd be happy about that. <laughs> I'm thinking that you're about done with this situation. So maybe I got some more after we move, all right? Maybe after we move in. I'm using Clear Salvation Solution over the shiplap. I could use a shellac based primer, but it's a small area and I don't feel like dealing with a stinky brush and this will keep those knots from bleeding through. So the hood is officially finished, done. All the way done. Except for Zeb needs to attach the stuff to the actual like hood part, but. I got uh, some metal flashing I need to put up on the bottom to, uh, you know, make it a little more flame retardant. Like the good looking stuff is done. The mechanics, 99%. Yeah, we're there. It's there. I'm loving the window trimmed out. I'm gonna come in early tomorrow and get some painting done in here. And I may even get started on these countertops. If you love what we've done in here, make sure you're hitting up jamierayvintage.com for the paint and products. Beadboard is the color of the farmhouse. Make sure you're hitting up jamierayvintagehome.com for our clothes, home decor, and farmhouse 1917 corbels. Be sure to give us a thumbs up and subscribe to Jamie Ray Vintage for more. DIY. The concrete stamping turned out good. We were gonna let it sit probably till like Monday, but I don't think we can wait. We're gonna go ahead and spray that off and clean that up tomorrow and see what we have with the dye and go from there. It's gonna be good. If you wanna see what this papers look like, make sure you hit that notification bell below so you never miss a video.